on time um, since it's anyway first us uh, so yeah yeah so <laughs> we have not many people in the room <laughs> but anyway we I hope we have some remote participants and we are presenting our uh, outcomes from the persistent identification of instrument working group and you have the agenda here on on the on the slide there's one uh, contribution from Jane Wingard who unfortunately she didn't make it and we have to cancel that um, very sad about that because I was very curious about what she pre would present uh, myself. But otherwise, uh, I hope we can just go and we will start with the introduction of the working group by Markus Stocker. And I just, yeah, Markus, just go ahead. Exactly. Thank you, Rolf. I will just. Um, um, you need to stop sharing. I guess for Marcus to share. I think I can just grab the permissions. So I think um, yeah, okay. you should see my screen. So welcome everybody um, also in the audience on site. Um, and let me move into presentation mode. So yeah, Marcus Stocker here. Um, I will give you a, a brief introduction to PIDINST for those um, um, for whom uh, this group might be new and um, tell you a little bit where we are coming from, why we did what we did and what we did um, in, a, in a brief 10 minutes introduction. So all this um, starts uh, in Reykjavik, at least from, the pers from our perspective. I'm not saying that there were probably initiatives also earlier on, but um, the, our history starts, I would say, at Pido Pelusa in Reykjavik, where we had a first uh, presentation of uh, persistent identification of instruments. And the, back then, it was a little bit the spirit of, yay, another uh, PID. Um, we just wanted to uh, see the idea of uh, using the persistent identifier infrastructure that already largely existed. Um, and apply it uh, for instruments as it is done and has been uh, done for a long time for various entities like data sets, articles, um, organizations, people with ORCID and so on. Um, and then we had um, um, a little bit later, we had then a first um, uh, boot camp, although this was about um, integrating ORCID as another persistent identifier for people in environmental research infrastructures. But that there, um, I did this boot camp, um, I then met Luis, and um, yeah, we seeded the idea of uh, uh, grounding this, this topic and the work, the development of it um, in uh, in the in a in a RDA working group, and that's uh, where I would say it started. Then in March uh, 2017, so then uh, the the development at uh, within RDF in the uh, sorry in the RDA context, um, so started uh, in September 2017 with a BOF at at P10 in Montreal. Um, we had then a few months later the case uh, statement submission which was accepted um, fairly quickly. And we started with a kickoff meeting uh, at P11 in Berlin then in March uh, 2018. And as you know, we had then these uh, 18 months of uh, development of the work um, and the wrap up meeting in, in Helsinki um, at P14 in October 19. And after that, we started publishing our deliverables. We had an article, I will uh, tell a little bit more about this in a minute. In uh, May 2020, it was published. In July 2020, um, this article became a supporting outputs um, endorsement from REA. And um, later we published the first version of the white paper, which we also will uh, touch upon a little bit um, in a minute. Um, and finally, just recently, and this is also the 
core uh, topic today to present you the, sp uh, the PDIN schema again, the final version 1.0 now as a uh, RDA recommendation, which was endorsed in March 2022, just a few months um, ago. So why does this all matter? So persistent identification of instruments should be broadly clear. So the idea is to apply um, persistent identifiers to instruments. So the instrument instances, the devices that are used to measure properties um, uh, in the sciences broadly. So this can be life science, um, so sensors in labs, uh, but it, it can be also earth science, of course sensors in the environment, uh, both in C2, remote sensing, and so on. So there is a whole palette of sensors and devices to which uh, this idea of, uh, or this concept of persistent navigation can be uh, applied. And why this matters is because um, these instruments play, of course, an essential role in creating research data these days. Uh, so a lot of the data that, um, is used downstream by scientists um, to uh, extract information about whatever they study is today generated on a continuous base also in a continuous manner, um, high frequency um, in some uh, occasions also um, by devices. And um, knowing about this instrument metadata is um, important to assess, for instance, the quality of the data, but also to determine whether a, da a data set can be reused in a, in, a, in a context of research. So I like to quote uh, here, Christine Borgman. Um, she said in a, or she wrote in a book um, titled Big Data, Little Data, No Data, that to interpret a digital data set, uh, much must be known about the hardware used to generate data, whether sensor networks or laboratory machines. Um, and often this data is um, tacit, so it's implicit in the hands. And it's known to some people that maybe set up the instrument, operated it, and then, yeah, so extracting it for the heads it's not well documented and extracting from the heads you have to contact these people maybe people leave maybe it's a phd student who has left the group and then this information also goes uh, accordingly as the person leaves so possible usage we have for instance persistent linking of research data and instruments um, so we can link these entities together since both are also persistent identifier we can use this uh, metadata linking citing in instruments in literature is for instance uh, a possibility then um, since of course um, they are mentioned in the materials and methods uh, section typically these instruments typically just the model maybe is mentioned now it's also possible would be possible to also cite a particular instrument, but also for inventory, for funding purposes, um, and other use cases, uh, this um, uh, approach could be uh, useful. So what exactly did we, did? Uh, uh, we did, did we do? So we have uh, collected use cases. We have then identified the common metadata about the instrument instances. This is important to remember. It's not about models here. It's primarily about instrument instances. And then we developed based on this work and published a uh, the schema, a first version. We implemented the community feedback that we got um, over schema revisions. Um, we had then the final publication um, as version 1.0 just recently uh, of the schema. And then in parallel, we also catalyzed the schema implementation um, by existing PID infrastructure. So we, we built on the existing PID infrastructure. We will, uh, I will uh, say about this a uh, little bit in a minute. Um, we didn't build a new PID infrastructure that enables, you know, the, the creation, the maintenance, governance of these um, identifiers. We leveraged what is already there. Um, and then we prototyped the adoption of the whole, the identifier, the schema, but also um, the uh, the the the, uh, the inf together with the PID infrastructures. We are um, prototyped the adoption here in uh, institutional instrument providers 
um, database, uh, instrument database managers, uh, research infrastructures, and so on. And of course, we engage the wider community at RDA planners. So we have two uh, scheme implementations. Um, we did it with DataSight, and we will hear with Matt in a in a bit also this contribution a bit more with DataSight and with Epic. So with DataSight, uh, we had of course to map the PDIN schema uh, to the DataSight schema. So this is a mapping that is only partial. So we couldn't fully map all the properties that we have in the PDIN schema, for instance, is not possible to easily map measured variables, but also other things are not included like um, the model name and for certain in uh, for certain vocabularies for certain properties it's a bit um, you need to bend a little bit the terminology so creator uh, in the data side schema becomes the our manufacturer publisher publication year is not clear how to well map uh, these um, to the um, to the uh, data side schema, so to the PDN schema. The advantage of, of data side is, of course, that um, it's a globally known PD infrastructure. Lots of people are using it um, anyway already. So that's a, a big advantage of, of this approach. The EPIC approach, um, so this is the uh, EPIC uh, PID uh, consortium, and um, I guess also uh, Tibor will touch upon this a little bit in the presentation that he has. So the advantage here is um, EPIC supports a full PID in schema implementation. So here we could implement the schema as it is uh, with all the properties, with all the constraints of the schema. And that's um, a, an advantage of, of this approach. Um, and EPIC might a little bit be a more a European centric PID infrastructure provider, maybe a little less known than data side. So that's uh, perhaps a, a disadvantage of this, um, this approach. So here, just quickly, a few screenshots. You have um, here the data site approach. You have the, the DOI that you can find out, look up in the data site search. Now you have metadata for it, but of course also um, uh, resolve this identifier on the web and you'll end up, end up on a landing page that further describes um, this instrument. And this is generally then some kind of research infrastructure like here, HCB, Helmut Center Berlin. Um, that has a, a, a repository or database that describes its instruments. And um, here you can also more further, more richly describe your instrument, link to other resources um, and, and, and so on. So here an example for the EPIC approach, and this is an implementation by BODC. So here you see the schema and the, the data here. Um, as it is uh, captured by handle.net. Um, so EPIC is also like a DOI, data side DOI is a handle. Um, and the, as you can see here, we have uh, in the data, it's a bit cryptic with these um, identifier names, but this is the measured variable. And you see here, you can link to the um, me uh, variable measured by this instrument here. BODC uses here even um, vocabulary for this, so links even to terminology that is um, formally described uh, for the variables. And again, if you resolve this uh, identifier on the web, you end up on a landing page. And in this case, it's even a, a fully machine readable landing page in, in sensor ML here shown in, in, in XML. So to the de deliverable quickly, and I'm conscious that um, time is running. So we had this um, data science journal um, article originally quite a bit ago, two, two years ago, we published this and uh, it became then a supporting output. Um, this is a good article that describes a little bit just what I said, um, how did we did the work um, and summarize a little bit the process and uh, tells more about the, the the use cases that we collected and so on. Um, then just recently, we published um, the last version of the schema. So, or the first, let's say, official version 1.0. Um, 
and is now also a RDA recommendation. This is certainly a, a good resource here to um, adopt and look at if you want to uh, use these uh, approaches and um, uh, describe your instruments also using the schema. And Rolf will um, uh, tell you more about the schema just uh, in a bit. Then um, this, the third deliverable is a white paper. This is a, a more a technical resource where we uh, detail a little bit more technical aspects. Uh, it's also an evolving resource. We will we can add here additional material, additional use uh, examples, um, and um, we will maintain this um, on the go. Uh, so this is a read to docs um, resource, and um, again also Rolf, unless Lou is joining then. Um, or has already joined, I'm not sure now, but um, we will also tell you a little bit more about the white paper just uh, in, a bit, in a minute. So we have a few communities and, and re uh, research infrastructure that have adopted um, uh, this, these approaches. Um, so the schema, but also the implementation of the schema with DataSite or EPIC. Um, as you can see here, a uh, number of uh, infrastructures. So BODC was very early on and Helmholtz Center Berlin also very, very early on. And we have the sensor community, also a, a larger community that actually uh, is been, has been using this. We have with ICOS and AVI and the community, a few um, research infrastructures in the earth uh, uh, system sciences. Uh, also, B2INST is an interesting uh, approach and system um, that Tibor will just present um, today also from EUDAT. And of course, um, we have been working with the community of practice in Australia, um, which is also uh, looking at the identification of instruments um, and uh, has a, a platform to discuss this um, topic uh, in particular in Australia. So what are the next steps? Um, we will submit the white paper now, finalize this and submit it as an RDA uh, supporting outputs also. Um, and yeah, so the group will continue maintaining the schema. We will monitor what's coming from uh, the community. Uh, if there are required changes, we will discuss them and, and, um, and implement them. Um, support the adoption and implementation of the schema is certainly uh, a, a, a key goal for the group. Um, develop also best practice with DCAT. So on schema.org, Robert uh, will touch upon this topic um, in this session. And um, we will also think a little bit more now concretely um, what could be a sustainability model for this uh, group. Um, and we have been discussing a little bit um, whether we adopt something aligned to um, IGSNs, for instance, that they have also a quite interesting model there, um, how to proceed um, with this uh, group here. And of course, continue engaging the community. There are a lot of uh, community efforts, um, also at RDA, for instance, I adopt um, the RRID community where we can and we should uh, continue looking for how to in, uh, integrate uh, with these uh, approaches. For instance, I adopt this to describe variables, which has, of course, uh, an important link uh, to PA, uh, persistent identification of instruments. And I can also announce this. We have registered uh, pidins.org. The website is not uh, online yet, so uh, you're not going to see anything, but this is a matter of uh, a few weeks now to have uh, presence also for the group on the pidins.org. And I just um, also registered on Twitter. So we have now also the Pidins uh, Twitter channel. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm handing back to uh, Rolf. Yeah, thank you, Markus. Um, one thing that I forget to mention in, in the introduction, um, we obviously also have collaborative notes and uh, I hope Markus will just post the link to the chat. And you are very uh, invited, first of all, to, to inscribe your name and, and contact details if you want to stay in contact. 
in the notes and of course you can add your own say remarks uh, on the session there now i will proceed with the fit in schema and let me just share my screen no. No. why doesn't shit it just worked Let me try again. Sorry about that. Oh, okay, that. That application just crashed. I have uh, pasted the notes in the chat. Um, yep. So there is a Google Docs for that. Thank you, Rolf. OK, now it works. So I would like to just present the PIT in metadata schema that we, that we submitted to RDA and that is now an official RDA recommendation. So what is this? This is a metadata is a metadata schema and it defines the properties that should be registered in the PIT infrastructure. That means uh, either the DOI metadata that you would register with DataSight or the metadata that you would register with the EPIC handles. It provides enough information to identify the individual instrument uh, but of course, it is a schema that must work for all kinds of instruments in all uh, scientific domains, and therefore it must be generic, and we don't have, say, much room to add technical description of the instrument. Uh, we, we are rather on the surface on, say, technical details. Uh, but... Uh, the, 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 the benefit of all these, these uh, 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 PID uh, metadata is that it allows to link with other PIDs and you can link with other resources. And you could, for instance, also link, say, detailed technical descriptions out of the PID metadata. And of course, Markus already mentioned that if you want to use DOIs, then of course you are constrained to use a data site metadata schema, and then you need to map the PID in schema that we that I present here uh, to the to the data site model. And I just listed in this table the top level properties, and we will describe them briefly. So we have uh, say. I would say them, say, technical metadata, so the, the identifier itself, so the, the PID that, that uh, identifies instruments. We have one property for the schema version, so you, that you can uh, uh, make clear what version of the schema you use when you register that PID. Uh, of course, you need to include the link to the landing page that the identifier should resolve to. And uh, maybe most importantly, you should must uh, register the name of the instrument. So preferably the name that should be meaningful to the users of the instrument. Then we have other metadata that is mostly the involved, say, entities or organizations. So you have the owner of the instruments. Uh, that may or may not be the legal owner. By owner, we mean, say, the 
the, the organization or the, the person that is responsible for the instrument. It might also be an organization that provides access to the instrument. And we have the manufacturer that is uh, the, the organization or, or, or entity that builds that instrument. Uh, it may be a commercial company if it is an off-the-shelf product, but it could as well be so if you have custom-built instruments that has, are built in your own, say, um, research institute, then you can very well have the fact that the owner and the manufacturer is the same organization, then you just register them twice at the institute properties. Then we have a little bit description of the instrument. That means a model name that is probably only meaningful for, for, for say, off-the-shelf instruments, for custom-built instruments, there might not be a model name. You have a room for a technical description that can, can say what is this instrument, that what does it do. You can have a field for the instrument type and uh, also for the measured variables. Uh, instrument type and measured vari variables are free text because there is no, say, overarching classification of types of instruments that would work in, in all scientific domains. Uh, and the uh, same for measured variable. But of course, if you are working in a domain that already has some controlled vocabulary for, for these type of information, then of course it is recommended to use these well-defined terms that work in your community. And you can also say add uh, PIDs uh, to, to link to, to these terms for the instrument type and for the variable. Then you can register dates. Most importantly, uh, an instrument, when the instrument has been commissioned, when it has been decommissioned. And uh, maybe the most important thing is you can add related identifiers. We borrowed this, this schema a little bit from data side. So you can link other, uh, other PIDs other types of external information with your instrument record. And you have also alternate identifier. That means other in, uh, ad identifier that uh, pertains to the same instrument. And that could be, for instance, um, uh, the, the serial number attributed by the manufacturer or the inventory number of your say, institutional inventory. Related identifier is maybe one of the most important properties, and that's why I want to comment a little bit more on them. You have different uh, relation types. Again, this is highly inspired by data site schema, but not completely the same. So you could link external documentation on the instrument while this is described by. You have sort of versioning of the instrument. If you, say, modify the instrument to an extent that you would not say it's not the same instrument anymore, then you can attribute a new PID and link these two with this new version of and this previous version of. You might have complex instruments that are built out of many different parts. And then you can uh, use PIDs for the individual uh, components and link then the, the compound instrument with uh, is component of and the other way around with has component. And yeah, well, the, the other ones I just I listed them there for completeness, but in the interest of time, I will skip over them. And then, of course, we have the formal reference of that recommendation where you can find it. And that's what I wanted to present on the schema. Now the question is, uh, 
has Lou arrived in the meantime? Um, not online. So it's so. yeah, she's also not here. Okay. So we 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 the next thing to to uh, present would be the bit in the white paper, and we thought that Lou Lou Daroch would present this, but we don't have news from here. Uh, so I will do that myself. And I don't prepare slide for that. I will do it in a way hands on. So the so the next outcome to uh, so the group output to come is a bit in the white paper. And it is as Marcus already described, it's kind of a living document. It is there is a web version of it, and you see it here. And it is very much, say, a handbook, a very practical guide on how to use all these things. There's lots of informations, and you can. So the 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 proper part of the white paper is this one. We have two appendices uh, that I just mentioned for the moment in an epic uh, cookbook. And the data site cockbook with, say, detailed instruction on how to register a data site DOI or an EPIC handle. And the white paper itself is here. Of course, I won't go through all of this uh, within my 10 minute slot. But you can see it is, uh, so the idea is to have a very practical. Uh, uh, instructions on on how to do things. We have, for instance, here again another description of the PIT in schema, more on, say, not a formal definition, but more an explanation what it is, what you should put there. And we have some some more hints about uh, some of the individual properties. As I said, for, for instrument type and measured variables, we have free text. But if you have, say, well-defined uh, uh, vocabularies, then you, it is described how to use them. And yeah, there are many practical hints here. Um, for instance, how to how to uh, attach labels to an instrument that would link to that uh, uh, PID, and what you might want to put on the landing page. Uh, so uh, this type of uh, information that you would need if you want to, to actually use this, that stuff. And as Marcus also already mentioned, that is considered to be a living document. It is supposed to be extended. For instance, what what we don't have uh, in that that white paper by now is what Robert uh, will present with schema.org, or what Jane uh, Wingard would present if she, unfortunately, she, she cannot come, but she had some uh, nice ideas about using Wikidata. These are very new ideas, and therefore we, we don't have them there yet. But of course, we might add them later on. And this is just an example on how we uh, uh, consider to extend that uh, with the time. Yeah, and I guess that's it, what I would like to say about the white paper. Um, of course, I will uh, add later on the link to the to to that web page to the uh, uh, collaborative notes after the session. So, as next speaker, I I'm happy to welcome Matt Bias from DataSide, and he wanted to tell us a little bit more on how DataSide would like to uh, implement 
uh, or what to, to support uh, instrument PIDs. So Matt, if you are ready to share, then you can just go on. Great, thanks very much, Ralph. And just checking you can hear me. Yep, we hear you very right. well. And so I will just share my screen and just get it into presenter mode. Give me a second. Yeah, looks good. Okay, perfect. Great. So thanks very much for having me. And um, it's great to be engaging with the community around this. And there's been a lot of work done by the group. And um, I spoke previously at an RDA event around how important this has been for data site and the data site community to be able to take this forwards and implement this within our schema. So I'll be talking a bit about the path forwards at data site, some of the partnerships that we have with uh, Epic and EU DAT and some of the things that we want to work on within the context of the PID graph. So briefly, just to connect why this is important to data sites, um, really our vision at data site is connecting research and identifying knowledge. And so what we mean by that is bringing together the disparate pieces across the research life cycle. So um, throughout the research life cycle, there's many different things that are done within a research study. And these are all important things that form um, part of the scholarly record. And we wanna be able to bring rigor to that scholarly record and being able to identify, describe, and make these then actionable and usable by the community. Our community exists um, across 50 countries. Um, globally, and we really like to work as a collective community working on communities of practice in that we work together with a common common cause and common purpose and work through these um, challenges in an iterative process such as we're doing today and talking about today. Over the years, we've supported various identifier communities in scaling the efforts. Um, Marcus mentioned briefly some of the work that we're doing with IDSN as an example, but we've also done things around DMP IDs, et cetera. Our historic approach has always been um, to support the registration of, of the identifier um, and the metadata. And traditionally, we were focusing around data sets and gray literature, but you would have seen over the years that we've supported and scaled to support communities beyond this. And I mentioned data management plans, events, preprints, and, and our approach with these has been similar across these communities and doesn't differ uh, when we talk about uh, PIDs for instruments. So as the community increasingly starts to embrace these new forms of research outputs, um, we want to make sure that we're understanding the workflows and the best practices that need to be developed um, in establishing this openness, connectedness across um, the different components of the research lifecycle. It's really important for us as a community to uniquely identify an instrument, um, as this is critical for the community to understand, and I think both Rolf and Marcus have touched on this, that it's critical to gather this contextual information and, and interpret the related um, data accordingly. And so from a data side perspective, we're really interested in continuing the dialogue on how we can better serve this use case, how we can work with the community, developing best practice, understanding what type of identifiers are needing, needed, what metadata is needed, how we can evolve the metadata schema um, in line with that and together working, working with this common purpose. We obviously have been working very closely to track the uh, working group um, activities. And this has obviously led to some work that we've done on our end. Next, an exciting piece is that we will be making some changes to our schema and I'll, I'll briefly touch on that in a moment, but um, we have the ability already to register instruments um, with data sites um, based on the mapping that was done by the working group. Obviously, there's some things that need to be done there in terms of understanding which fields to use, but it can be used to register instruments. 
And once instruments are registered, um, not only can the related identifiers be used to describe different um, pieces of the instrument or components, as an example, could also be used to describe relations across different um, research outputs or resources. And so an example could be that we could link in publications and data sets. And then also in the schema, it's possible to link in the individuals um, using their ORCID IDs, organizations using raw IDs, funders again using raw IDs or the FundRef um, registry IDs. And these can then allow us both um, through a UI, um, looking at an example like this, which is pulled out of a notebook, or a GraphQL API query, understand the relationships between an instrument and the different resources and outputs um, across the research lifecycle. And so PIDs for instruments with data sites, um, as I mentioned, some of our uh, members are already using our schema to register instruments. Um, this varies in use. And so we are trying to also refine this um, and understand better how we can um, provide better guidance around this. Um, this is all pending a change that is coming in our schema release later this year. The current recommendation is that when registering an instrument, use resource type general other. Um, this is a controlled field. Um, so in the interim, use resource type general other and resource type, which is a free text field instrument. Um, this will be one of the things that will change in the schema release um, later this year in that we will be able to um, identify an instrument and would be able to update the metadata of existing instruments that have registered. Um, so um, that will also include um, the um, ability to um, better describe the relation types. Um, and Ralph um, really also spoke about this, how important this is. And it's really important that we adapt and, and implement that within our schema. So our metadata working group is currently considering that and working on those changes and more information will be shared in the coming months. Uh, really exciting. We have a partnership with EU DAT and EPIC. Um, and Thibault will talk a bit about the B2N um, service. So I won't go into too much detail about that. But really, um, at this stage of proof of concept, scaling up to a production service. Um, this allows the community to assign both EPIC handles to instruments in, in more of a transient state or when, when you need more flexibility in the metadata schema. So Marcus also touched on this in that data site has a set schema, whereas EPIC has, has more flexibility. Um, but then in a final state, it might be um, appropriate to then assign the DOI um, and link. We can link the different identifiers together. We also at DataSite believe that there's, um, we, we should not create a polar situation where we're having to choose between either or um, because at different states, and we know that the research life cycle is a dynamic cycle, that we should be able to assign the appropriate identifiers at, at the different stages. And within the schema, use the relations to describe the relationships between those identifiers and, and metadata records of those different um resources or, or outputs um so um that's really important um we want to make sure that we can support that with the community the service will be sustained by eu dat and we'll be doing harmonization work um under the dice project um the um project um if it's all um, for specifically for this will be um, kicking off in, in the next um, couple months and working across EU DAT, EPIC and data site on these efforts. Um, and with that, um, I think I'm one minute short of the 10 minutes, but um, yeah, happy to take questions at the end. Um, there are our details here. Um, please do reach out, get in touch. Um, we see this as a really important community effort and look forward to working with you all. Yeah, thank you, Matt. That was really great news. And and you already mentioned your cooperation with B2Inst, and that is exactly the next contribution. So Tibor Kalman will speak about uh, that exciting uh, service that is going to 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 be available soon. Hopefully, I don't know. 
Tibor, please. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Rolf. Um, this is just to confirm that you see my slides in presentation mode yeah. and you can hear me. Yeah. Very well. Okay, perfect. Then um, let me just start. Um, today, I will briefly set the stage a bit and very briefly, I say some words um, about the between service, which is a service for persistent identification of instruments. Um, then mainly I will speak about the management and strategy aspects of setting up this service in a context of a European uh, data infrastructure consortium and what we are working on to create such a service exactly. Then I will briefly show how we are making use of registered instruments metadata. And finally, I will also say some words about the technolog technological challenges we face at the moment. Um, so let's start with the basic idea for those who do not know the B2In service and what our motivation was to start with a new service. Um, basically, we saw two interesting developments and identified two uh, trends. First, we found that some uh, ded dedicated registries were created on the community level for any kind of sensors. Um, this, of course, led to the issue how to harmonize the instrument metadata across, for example, sensor networks. And secondly, some registries started to assign PIDs for, for their instruments. So we saw an emerging new kind of a PID type, which has been created. Um, since not everybody wants to run or can run such a registry service on its own, we found that there is some common demand for a public service to describe, register, and reference instruments. How could such a service look like? Um, you can see uh, the landing page uh, of the B2In service. And um, yeah, um, we, we try to um, create or try to use established technologies uh, for, for uh, setting up such a registry service. Um, I will say some words later on, on the technological uh, challenges and the adoption of the technology we chose. Um, basically, users can describe um, describe their instruments uh, with, with some basic metadata. Uh, DOIs are generated for the landing pages and EPIC PIDs are generated for uh, uploaded uh, data objects, which are somehow related to the instruments. Um, let me just briefly show some screenshots from the user interface. Um, this is just to so, show how an instrument looks like in the between service. So what is on a landing page of an instrument? It is basically very similar to the table uh, showed by Rolf that describes the PIDINS uh, PIDIN schema. So we have some generic stuff like name, uh, description, identifier, but more importantly, uh, the basic attributes for instruments are also there. We are making changes uh, here in this part of the service just to be fully conform with the released, uh, with the released schema by this working group. Um, additionally, you can upload optional files if any, for example, if you have manuals or pictures of the instruments, you can also add and they will start in the between service. Um, all registered information is by default publicly available for everyone. Uh, only creating and maintaining information requires some authorization. Um, the service supports federated ID management, so all users can use their home accounts if they would like to do so. Coming to the updates uh, for this plenary and showing uh, what we are working on currently. Um, so we are implementing a new production service under the umbrella of EUDOT. 
EU dot is a common data infrastructure in Europe. Uh, EU dot is a legal person, and um, yeah, uh, several uh, providers, several partners are backing this consortium. I have added some more slides on EU dot under backup slides. So later on, you can check out uh, on your own if you were interested in more details. But uh, putting a new production and service under the umbrella of EU dot requires to follow some IT service management processes. Um, the most important process for us is the service portfolio management process. This is one of the most strategic uh, service management processes because it defines how new services are introduced, how new services are created, and how uh, services um, yeah, um, are run in production mode. This describes uh, kind of a managed way uh, how we implement the between service in the context of EUDAT. And uh, we are currently defining clear decisions points. So uh, be able to say, yeah, from this point in time, uh, the service is productional. From this point of time, uh, we give guarantee for any kind of registered instruments metadata. For that, uh, we are currently working on a business model template. You might be familiar with this. You need to define who are your customers, who are your users. Um, there are some text, textual descriptions regarding value proposition and the service description. Um, this business model template also describes which partners are exactly required to run the service and to give guarantees for this service. Um, also some uh, kind of risk analysis is there so what happens if one of the required partners decides not to continue providing this service who could jump in uh, what should be done to to continue uh, the service being running for the community the second uh, i would like to give an update is um, to show that registering instruments is a nice first step, but we are not just register those instruments to be registered. We would like to make use of the registered instruments metadata. So for that, uh, we are currently evaluating various ways uh, how we integrate the B2 in service with metadata indexing services and uh, with discovery portals. One example is, is the B2 find um, service um, B2 find provides, so this is a kind of a metadata indexing service and a joint metadata catalog um, in more in the European context. Uh, it, is, it also provides a powerful discovery portal, which allows users to um, yeah, search for data collections, data objects based on different kind of relations. Uh, it also provides a kind of a gateway to the European Open Science Cloud. It means that um, all the indexed metadata finds its way uh, to the European uh, Open Science Cloud data catalog. Why it is important for us? Because uh, I'm not sure how, whether you can see the screenshot in details. Um, now uh, you can filter uh, by instruments. So uh, if, if, uh, if the objects or data sets in the data repositories are linked to instruments PIDs, then you will be able to filter by instruments in this discovery portal. Um, we are evaluating two approaches at the moment, uh, what to show if you, if you uh, would like to see instruments metadata or would you like to filter by instruments metadata, one approach is to uh, link to the instruments landing page I was showing previously, or the other approach is um, let the B2 find service search in the B2 in service and provide you more metadata included uh, in the search results. And last but not least, um, some words about the technology and software development um, steps we are doing at the moment. So for B2inst, 
we didn't want to start from scratch and we didn't want to develop a completely new software stack. Uh, my fellows uh, in the Netherlands who created the proof of concept chose an established technology. This is a technology for data repositories and this is branded as B2Share, but basically based on Invineo. This is the technology which backs Zenodo. Um, we are still very committed to continue using this technology, but uh, we found that a registry for instruments is a bit different from a pure data repository uh, because the focus is more on the metadata instead of the data. So fortunately, the technology, the B2Share technology enabled us to modify the root schema and used, um, yeah, and, and adapt other schemas like the PIDIN schema. Um, but we would like to have a bit more when it comes to customization. For example, the user interface, for example, uh, extensions, community-based extensions in the metadata schema. So unfortunately, our development roadmap with B2Inst differs a bit from B2Share's roadmap. We are currently evaluating basically two different ways. One is um, how we can contribute more to the basic B2Share developments to provide this flexibility on handling of metadata and schemas and supporting testbeds. And the other way we evaluating uh, we are testing other technologies. For that, we collected some requirements we really would like to have, uh, or we really would like to support. And um, our plan is to announce um, at the annual EU.conference in the autumn uh, production service, which, uh, yeah, which provides uh, the persistency of, uh, of the identifiers registered for instrument. So I think my time is over. Uh, that was the very brief update um, from the B2Inst perspective. I'm happy to take questions in the in the generic discussion part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tibor. That was very interesting. Um, the next uh, uh, contribution on the schedule would have been from Jane Wingard. She had some interesting ideas on leveraging Wikidata in the context of uh, instruments. Unfortunately, she uh, needed to cancel uh, the, the contribution in the last minute, so she is not able to join. Uh, so we will skip that. But we will certainly follow up on this and find a way to, say, disseminate her ideas on some other uh, occasion. And therefore, we proceed with uh, Robert Huber, who uh, has some consideration on how to integrate instrument metadata with schema.org. So Robert, if you are able to share, then the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, Rolf. Um so I hope you can hear me <coughs> and you can see my slides here. Both so, is fine. Okay. So uh, well, I give a, a short uh, five minute talks about the connection between PITS for instruments and schema.org or it's more about pot uh, potentials connections. Um, so schema.org uh, is uh, well, in terms of the schema.org data set, uh, <coughs> Um, a scheme is a uh, well a generic uh, metadata standard which uh, is uh, very popular now also in the uh, research data management uh, domain so we thought it would be worth to investigate uh, if there is a easy possibility to integrate information about instruments uh, using this um, metadata scheme Sorry, yeah. So uh, first, uh, I thought it would be quite easy because there actually is a instrument uh, property in schema.org. And of course, we have a data set uh, type in schema.org, uh, which uh, well, the most natural way uh, to 
connect uh, instruments and uh, data set information or scientific uh, data information would be to use these two uh, types of properties. But the, the problem is that uh, first of all, instrument is uh, just a property uh, which is expected to be used uh, in uh, types which are uh, derived from action. And as you can see, uh, the data set type is a creative work um, type, which is derived from thing. And unfortunately, the data set type does not have a property which uh, makes it possible to link instruments and it does not have a dedicated instrument property. The only action uh, type property in data set is potential action, but this doesn't actually fit uh, uh, or is not well, in my opinion, semantically correct here. So, uh, and also the definition of instrument is a little bit different from what uh, I think we would uh, expect. So the definition is an uh, object that had the agent perform the action. Uh, and the example is John wrote a book with a pen. So this is uh, more, I think, related to, uh, well, <laughs> uh, other kinds of actions on the other way. And it's quite generic. But uh, as I said, so this is not uh, easy to connect and this uh, most natural handshake I would have expected is not possible. So how to link instruments in, in schema.org uh, data set? Of course, schema.org uh, schema uh, is uh, expressed in uh, JSON-LD in most cases, which is a serialization format for linked data. And of course, uh, theoretically, we can use this uh, to link uh, other uh, 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 objects or uh, information from, from other ontologies here. For example, SUSE sensor would be a candidate here. Uh, the thing is that there is no consensus yet how to do this. Uh, so there are in theoretically uh, several possibilities to, to embed, for example, um, SOSA or SSN uh, objects. And uh, <clears throat> one of these is to use the, uh, well, properties which are already there in schema.org data set. And the other option would be to somehow embed or extend uh, these uh, 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 properties uh, and use other contexts here. But in any way, we need a community consensus to, to do this. And uh, so my talk actually is to, to initialize uh, a discussion about possible ways. So uh, candidate properties to be used for embedding, um, <clears throat> so sorry for the typo, uh, embedding instrument metadata in uh, schema.org data set is, for example, recorded add. There is a property which is called measurement technique, but uh, as you can see, the, the types of these um, properties are slightly different uh, from what we would expect. Uh, and there is a, a, a generic one, the is based on, which can be used to uh, link other creative work or, uh, <coughs> well, metadata descriptions, but, uh, well, it's very generic. Uh, <clears throat> we had an initial uh, proposal to uh, include um, instrument-like metadata in uh, schema.org, uh, which we uh, described in the white paper, which has been mentioned before, which is using the, the pure uh, schema.org dataset solution. And you can see here uh, the, the linkage was done by uh, using recorded ads. So it means that the <coughs> um, it is uh, uh, using an event type uh, link. So the event in terms of uh, an action which has been performed during a distinct uh, scientific uh, uh, event, um, which is here uh, a scientific uh, cruise uh, expedition, uh, which took place uh, during a, well, 
certain uh, distinct uh, location. And there uh, you can see this recorded in um, a property which is linking then a creative work, which is uh, actually uh, based on uh, a description of uh, uh, a vehicle, which is here regarded as an, well, uh, uh, <clears throat> a top level instrument, a, a scientific platform. So, uh, but you can easily see that the connection between this platform or instrument type uh, information is uh, very complicated. This is a quite windy way to get to this uh, instrument information from data set. So we might think about uh, finding an easier, a better solution. So what uh, we started here uh, is a, a new page or repository on the uh, PIT inst repository on GitHub, where we uh, can, uh, well, discuss uh, possible ways. In the moment, there's just a, uh, well, uh, an overview page. And uh, the idea is here to create issues uh, and to link these issues with this uh, readme page so people can immediately see uh, what we are talking about. <clears throat> and well, maybe we can use this way uh, to uh, collect uh, uh, possibilities how to uh, use uh, generic metadata standards like schema.org dataset or also DCAT, which is also uh, <clears throat> a linked data type. Um, um, yeah, so the uh, idea is to, to use this uh, GitHub page and continue discussion there and you are warmly invited. Yeah, so here is an example on the in, on an individual uh, issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Robert. So that was the uh, schedule for the speakers for today's session. Uh, now we start with the discussion. Um, and I, at the moment, I don't see, so, so for the remote uh, contributors, please uh, add your questions to the chat. Uh, or if there are questions here in the room. I don't, yeah, there is, uh, could you w wait for the, for the micro to, to, to be passed? Otherwise the remote participant cannot hear you. Okay, uh, Pascal Anturier from IRD France. Uh, maybe I didn't understand all, but uh, uh, I think that communities, organization for PID is very important. And uh, I would like to hear more about uh, how you organize each community and what are the, the really uh, issues uh, which community uh, can be uh, can can be uh, discussed. Yeah, very good question. <laughs> Marcus uh, touched it a little bit. For the moment, uh, our organization is just the RDA Welcome Group, so it's just us. Uh, working together. But as Marcus mentioned, that is indeed something to discuss how to say sustain it a little bit more and how to to become something that is say more stable than this. I believe for the moment we don't have an answer to this, but I agree with you that we already identified this as an issue to, to be discussed. Marcus, do you want to comment on that uh, more? Well, um, yeah, so we are basically looking a little bit what others have uh, also been doing. There are, of course, a number of um, communities that are governing um, and developing persistent identifiers. And um, as I, I mentioned, the specificity IGSN. So we are taking a look, closer look at their model and trying to learn what what these communities did and and see if it's a good fit for us so this is work in progress but um yeah there is a bit of discussion um you know whether this group will uh, stay within rda because we are now in a maintenance mode and it's a bit unclear what that means long term or we're moving it um out uh, into a, a legal entity on its own uh, like igsn does but this is a bit unclear uh, at this point. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions here or in the audience? So I don't see anything in the chat so far. I don't know, but yeah, no comment. Yeah, if that is not the case, uh, I do, <laughs> do have questions, uh, in particular taking up on uh, uh, what Robert uh, uh, was presenting. So uh, Robert presented the, the, the situation on how to link data sets with instruments with schema.org. But the interesting question is, if the other schemas that we already used before, uh, if the situation is better. So Tibor, you mentioned that you in B2Find link instruments, but if I understand correctly, you used your own, say, uh, your own schema in, in, in B2Find for, for doing that. Is that correct? Um, yes and no. Uh, so, uh, we, we use our own schema because this is a technological requirement um, and also it is a requirement in the EU dot context or put it that way if, if we support uh, the EU dot the so-called EU dot core schema then our life is much easier so what we are doing at the moment is uh, somehow harmonizing uh, the bidding schema with the EU.core schema. The EU.core schema is also just having some uh, very basic information about registered objects like name, like identifier. So they are not so different, but there are some additional fields uh, which might be required. Um, so yes, technically uh, the schema is different and no, what we are trying to show uh, to the user is exactly the schema uh, which was accepted and agreed on in this working group. Yeah, I guess, uh, um, so my question was more on the other way around, on how to link data sets with instruments. And so, so we would need to speak about the schema describing data sets and how to put instrument information there. And uh, that could also be a question uh, for Matt. Uh, looking in the data site schema, so I was uh, for, for my own uh, data sets until now using a related identifier with relation type is compiled by. And I always had on my to do list what I never got around to do is starting the discussion uh, whether this is a, indeed the correct approach or if there's something else to, to recommend or if we need to say come to a say common standard on on how data sets and instruments should be linked yeah i think i think it's important that we um that we work together to to agree on that so i'm hesitant to to provide a recommendation myself um it is being discussed what i can say is our metadata working group is discussing this as part of the next schema iteration so as part of the work activity related to instruments um and kelly on our team who is our uh, technical um adoption manager is also working on documentations uh, more broadly around relation types but also related to this um so i think that's something that we can, I, I can also maybe follow up with you, Rolf, and we, we can maybe um, talk about the way forwards and how we reach consensus, because from our point of view, what we'll want to do is set up documentation with the community and best practice based on community consensus. Um, so we all, all, I guess, follow the same, same guidelines. Yeah, I would suggest we urgently need to say, come together and, and discuss these things. more questions from the audience uh, maybe um Rolf, there's nothing in the chat so it's very quiet but uh, there are a few uh, comments in the notes also so um i'm not sure whether maybe we can ask uh, the authors of the questions in the notes to just uh, raise their hands and speak up or otherwise we can uh, maybe discuss uh, these um, points a little bit. So one was 
Um, Epic versus data site. Um, is there a simpler path how to choose? So, um, um, yeah, so maybe there is, as Matt said, there is no need to choose really uh, at different types, uh, time points in the research life cycle. One um, approach might be more suited than others. So, um, Epics, for instance, com comes to my mind, Epic IDs uh, early on in the data production when things are changing, when things are dynamic and uh, maybe a, a, a DOI then later on when uh, at the publication time of the, of the um, um, outcomes and the artifacts um, in the literature. Um, so yeah, so maybe there are different uh, usage uh, of these identifiers at this different point in the, in, in the life um, cycle. So um, the question, um, do we need to choose yeah. um, upfront or not? Um, yeah. Does uh, whoever put that in the notes, do, do you want to uh, comment on that or uh, expand on that? Otherwise, uh, so I understand that as a question on uh, what would be the criteria or to choose uh, if you had to choose between EPIC and data site, what would be, would be the pros and cons of both approaches. And uh, well, maybe I can comment on uh, why HZB choose DOIs. Uh, not not epic. It was very much a pragmatic approach. It was uh, just the most easy thing to do for us, because we have the options to to mint DOIs for our other research artifacts, anyways. And we we consider the PIDIN schema and the mapping to data site. And it's not perfect, but it for us it was just uh, good enough to use. And so it was the most easy thing to do. Um, EPIC has an advantage that you can, so you don't need a mapping of the PIDIN schema, you can use it directly, so you have, uh, say, more options to, to describe, ex to do exactly what we have in the PIDIN schema. Um, DOIs are, maybe that, that could be also one argument, DOIs are more common, and so most, say, re researchers are more, say, uh, familiar in, in using DOIs that could be an advantage for DOIs. Otherwise, from the technical level, I wouldn't see too much differences between them as I, I would say both options are just valid. That is my personal take on that. Yeah, so we have also um, Tibor your hands raised. Yeah. yeah. Um, so from my perspective, um, uh, it doesn't matter which one you take. Uh, you just you just should use one of the PIDs and uh, maybe one of the major existing PID infrastructures. However, one important difference is what you put in the PID record itself. So the EPIC approach foresees to put the metadata in the PID record itself. The data site approach uh, and the DUI approach foresees to put the metadata to somewhere else and leave the PID record itself more or less empty. Um, at EPIC, we are working on, um, and we are contributing to the FAIR Digital Objects Forum activities. We are working on typing of, of persistent identifiers and data sets. This means that if you if you uh, would like to somehow create machine actionable types of PID records and of data objects, then um, there is an additional component, the type registry, where you can create um, an exact description of your schema of your type, and uh, you can rely on these type definitions in the PID records itself. What does it mean concretely for for uh, the PIDINST activities? So if you have if you have this, I would say basic schema created by this working group, um, and you are fine with it, it's perfect. But many communities need some extensions 
because they would like to add some additional fields. They always did this in the past, uh, so they, they need some uh, additional information. Then the approach would be to create a new type uh, definition in the type registry and clearly mention this in the PID record that, uh, that you support, uh, your PID support this kind of uh, additional type informations. Um, so from the EPIC perspective, the freedom is there. Uh, of course, uh, with great power comes uh, a, bit, a bit more to think about. Um, so if, if, you, if you're happy with the data site schema, as it is provided, exactly as it is provided, then um, this might be a good thing to go for the data site DOI approach. If you need some more extensions, if you need a bit more freedom, then um, the EPIC approach would be the way to go. Yeah, thank you, Tibor. Um, Julien, you have your hands oh. Yes, thank you for the, the nice presentations. Um, I had a question about the relation between instruments and uh, basically the, the their description or their or I yeah I I try the question again. If there is different instance of the same instrument, so the same machine sold twice, how do you link them together, and how to do you link instrument with their description? Yeah, so uh, the question would be, what do you mean by different instances of the same machine? So uh, do you mean different physical instances? Or do you mean, say, different uh, uh, multi, -P, multi PIDs for the same physical instance? No, I, I mean the different machines, but the same, basically the same machine built two times. Yes. So, so uh, what we considered in PIT inst, uh, we we have uh, PIDs for the individual instances. So you would have attribute uh, PIDs for each of them, individual ones. But if they they if they are the same model, say the same design, then they would have the same uh, value for the model property, prop, and. I believe we also support, yeah, uh, I believe also we also support, say, adding identifiers into the model field. And so uh, you don't have the ambiguity of model names, which can be, well, sometimes uh, they mean the same, sometimes they, they don't mean the same. So we can exactly link to, 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 to a model of the instrument. And then you know that, that you have multiple instances of the same technical model. But uh, the, the idea would, in principle, always to have individual PIDs for, for, for each of the, uh, of the instance. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. The um, uh, following one is, in practice, researcher will probably go um, don't have PIDs for all the instruments but maybe linking their data set with an instrument model how do you what do you see in the future what what would be the way to go that the two are not using the same pathway or how to disentangle this, well, this future in any case, use? Uh, in any case, that is not the use case that uh, our working group considered. We, we considered PIDs for, for the individual instances. And uh, the reason to do that is um, that even if you have two or more in, uh, instruments from the same model, they might be very similar because they, they de are designed with the same de design. Uh, but but still each uh, instance could be different from each other. So you have different moments in time where it has been calibrated. 
uh, you have uh, all the history of offset instrument would be different from each other. And uh, we considered that that, that would be important information to, to retain and that that would only work on the instance uh, level. So uh, I believe what, 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 what you are aiming at is you want, ha want to have uh, PIDs for, for the models. Uh, and that is also something that, that, that other groups uh, consider. There are these uh, RIDs, which are, I believe are mostly used in, uh, say, uh, biosciences. And uh, that could be used for, 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 for instrument models, I believe. I'm not an expert on, that, on these. And otherwise, well, one could, of course, start the discussion whether we have uh, proper PIDs for instrument models. That, that would be a, a new, say, task. Yeah, my point was more on a practical point, right? So if, if at some points we link data sets with instruments, researcher will, or at least most researcher will not uh, go through the problem of registering each instrument and they may just link to um, to the model and um, this make things more fussy and maybe more so i'm just forcing a problem and uh, like to discuss if we can foresee solutions basically yeah are there other say comments on that questions yeah, so the question is indeed who registers exactly the instrument. So we have discussed this also in the group. Um, so it could be also the manufacturers that um, already uh, register the instruments uh, before shipping them. So that's a little bit unclear whether in the end it's really the researcher. It could be, of course, also the research infrastructure often behind these um, instruments. There is a whole... Um, um, yeah, infrastructure that maintains them, uh, who registers, uh, could be data stewards that do this job. Um, so I, I see the, um, I think it's interesting to actually have a link to the physical instrument, not just the model, because it's more granular. Um, it's more accurate also that it's not a model that generates the data. So linking to the model is a little bit indeed vague. Um, um, knowing that it's exactly this instrument, I think there is um, added value. And this, as Robert uh, Rolf just said, um, there is additional information that you can attach to the instrument, like calibration sheets, um, which is more accurately linked to the to the instrument rather than the model. Um, I don't know, um, Emmanuel, do you want to add uh, to this point? Um, there are a few additional um, questions in the chat that we'd like to take. So, Emmanuel, if you want to add yeah, to yeah, this. No, um, yeah, I just, it, it's, 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 an, it's a question towards the, the practicality um, in, in using the PIDs that I had to Rolf. I don't know whether that's that fits in here. Um, but just I, I just want to know from Rolf how, how we actually implements the PIDs in his uh, in the, in HDB because who, uh, as, as you said you know who registers it I would say that's the labs or the the, 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 the the operators of the instruments but how do you make sure that the P that the PIDs of the instruments actually end up with the data um, how is that connection made but <laughs> we can maybe do that later well I can comment on that of course um, um, so, so we at HZB, we have the, we didn't do it yet. We, we started with a few of them, but we, in principle, we have the idea to register PIDs for each beam lines and for each extra stations at least. And uh, who is going to do that? Um, myself probably. <laughs> and uh, the next question on how to link the data with instruments. That is, of course, a tricky question that why, because it depends on who is creating the data set and who is creating the metadata of that data set. As long as we do it, as long as it is raw data that is, say, created in the workflows that we control, 
And of course, we make sure that this linkage is there. But if any, say, researcher has a data set and registers that data set somewhere, so we, we don't really have the control over that. Right. Yeah, and I wonder so if the instruments should do that uh, in the end, right. in the future, right. right? They could do I think this so, also. Because I was I was thinking how we how I could bridge that, you know, for for like uh, our geoscience stuff, and it would help very much if if the if there was some way of having the the PIDs um, somehow be human readable or at least human understandable for people who actually then use them, because that will be mainly researchers at the end. Uh, putting them into the metadata. And if that's just arbitrary numbers, then that could be uh, very difficult. I don't know if there, there's a solution to that. Um, uh, I, th I think it would just help the process in, in actually using them. Yeah, okay. It, it starts a whole new discussion on, on, on how to guarantee accurate uh, metadata for data sets if you generate them <laughs> and that's how fine. to incentivize the researchers to, to, to do that right or how we should support them on doing that right. Uh, <laughs> I guess we can't answer that in one minute. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I admit, I just, uh, uh, it was just, I was just wondering how to practically do that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Rob. And, and, and maybe uh, one last co uh, comment to, to Julian on, on who is going to register or whether the, the researcher are doing uh, they'll be bothering uh, registering instrument PIDs. That is, of course, uh, if B2inst is, uh, say, uh, working, then that will help them a lot uh, because they, they will take most of the burden of, of doing that. So uh, anyway, we <laughs> right at this moment, we reached the formally the, the end of the session. Uh, so if there are not any burning questions that we must need, must address uh, right now. I um, yeah, I just answered to Robert quickly. So he had this idea or question whether we should have a top level registry above, uh, you know, Wikidata and post potentially in the future also data site and EPIC and possibly others. So I think that um, is something that crossed my mind as well, actually, recently, and maybe something that PDNs could uh, focus on in the future to actually develop such a top registry that essentially harvests um, only the metadata about um, instruments um, and their identifiers and provides um, a global view, so to say, on the distributed infrastructure. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Then I, I will close that session. I very much uh, would, would like to express my thanks to all the speakers. It was really great to, to get all these uh, news. And there was also, say, interesting new information also for me. And I also would like to thank the audience, and in particular to all uh, people in the audience who participated in the discussion and raised questions that is really helping us to get further. And as uh, Marcos said, uh, the working group still exists in maintenance mode. We, we will continue our work in that, that way, at least for the next future. We still meet uh, monthly uh, online and you are all invited, say, to, to join the discussion and, and to come to our meetings. With that, thank you all. And, uh, and the last very big thanks to, to the technical team who did much great work to support all of us. Many thanks. Okay, bye. <laughs>